it's March, it's getting warmer, and nothing says warm weather like a good TBR and a good book. Hi friends, I'm Courtney and welcome to my channel. If you haven't already watched it, feel free to check out my February haul video where I show you all the books I said I wasn't going to buy, but ended up buying anyway during my book buying ban month. I thought it was going to last longer than then until February, but you know, we'll just accept it. Also, I have my social media channels if you want to follow me there and engage in community building and conversation as well on my Facebook, Bookstagram, and Twitter. So these I post a little bit more frequently and regularly, more so than my YouTube channel, which is usually once a week, maybe twice a week if I have other things going on that I would like to share with you all. But yeah, feel free to hit me up on those social media channels. So today we are going over my March TBR, my to be read pile for 31 days. Yay! So February was a bit short with 28 days, so it wasn't a leap year to give us another day to read, but that's all right. I read nine books and almost a tenth, but at this point I'm recording before February is over, so we'll see if that tenth book actually happens. But yeah, it was a pretty good month in general, but ready to start another one fresh and with some different kinds of books. Some of them have been on my shelf for a long time. One of them is a newer book and I'll explain why I added it to my pile for this month. And yeah, we'll just go from there. First book I have is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. So I'm a big TJR fan. I love Daisy Jones and the Six. Can't wait for it to be adapted and to see the cast all come together, but I also wanted to read some of her other books and I have some other backlisted books on my wish list and things I want to read later. Not now, but this I've had from the book loft when I made a visit up there. I think in October was the last time I did a bookstore tour, a video tour there and picked this. This was the first book I literally picked up and put it in my basket. And yeah, I've, I've seen so much about it. I've seen other folks do reading vlogs on this story and this was highly recommended. So I did a poll on Instagram to have you all vote on which book I should read for my March reading vlog. This one came in second, very, very high up there, but didn't quite beat out, obviously, <laughs> the one that came in first, which I'll share what that one is. So that just means even more to me that I need to read this book because so many of y'all voted for it. So this details Evelyn Hugo, who gets reached out to or talks to a journalist and wants to write a story or um, of like, it starts out as writing just a story for like a newspaper or an article or journal or something like that. And then it evolves into like a whole book or like a series of her life and detailing everything about her in like a no, no holding back kind of way. So we learn more about her as well as the journalist. So yeah, I feel like she's gonna have a lot of interesting stories to tell <laughs> as we learn about nine seven husbands is a lot maybe there's something else i'm missing there that is not literally seven husbands but if it is cool so yeah we will see how that goes also on my trip to the book loft i purchased fallen kingdoms by morgan rhodes so this also was on my voting a poll for the marked reading vlog this got the least amount of votes but that's okay i'm still clearly going to read it and this has been on my mind a lot because it has it's like a Game of Thrones a young adult <laughs> version of a Game of Thrones but it's a it's also a series has a lot of fantasy elements in there as well and yeah it was recommended by Books Nest so Beth at Books Nest and she was recommended by another booktuber or one of her bookish friends and she has been making her way through the series so I just bought the first book for now and then we'll go from there so yeah I'm excited I've been diving more into fantasy sci-fi novels and it's just nice to have a little bit different perspective on things or I mean most of the times stories are about like humans or like emotions or like relationships and family and trust or whatever but it's just like the added plot of like the fantasy elements that kind of make it even more interesting so that like I can't why would I fault a book for thinking outside the box and being super creative and imagining things that we couldn't think possible? So I've been really getting into that. And I've also, speaking of Game of Thrones, I've been starting the whole season or series all over again. So funny story, at the library that I go to, the Cincinnati Public Library system, and this might be the same at other libraries, but if there is a series or a 
or something that you're trying to get that has multiple discs, note that they come, you can only reserve it as like a disc, like it comes in a case with one disc in it. So what happened was I picked up, went to go pick up Game of Thrones season one and I ended up picking up disc five and that was it. And then I realized like, oh, I have to go in and literally put a hold on discs one through four as like separate entries. So learned about that the hard way. Wasn't gonna go jump into disc five, even though I've seen them already, but I wanted to start from the beginning. So that was on my mind. And then this is on my mind for this month. And the book that did win for the poll for my March reading blog was The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. So this was gifted to me by my friend Liz at Read by the Color amongst a whole kind of like birthday book package from my gal pal group here in the Cincinnati area. So because it was locked down for my birthday in November, they wanted to treat me to some bookish things for my birthday. So they each picked out a book that like was very much in their style and very much something that they think I would like. And like, clearly this is one that's right up my aisle or right up my alley as it comes to books about books. So this I know has a lot of commentary on mental health. So I am intrigued by that as more and more of mental health is being talked about and shared in a lot of different stories, both in, in books and in film and TV. So I think that it will be good. But yeah, this will be my reading vlog selection for March. So I'll read this. Let's see. I like that it's a decent font size and decent margins. How many pages is it? It is 288 pages. So I might be able to finish this in a day or a weekend, like the past two vlogs I've done, one for Eddie LaRue and one for Twisted, the Tangled History of Black Hair Culture, they both were read in a day, day and a half, but I don't wanna keep forcing myself to like, I have to finish this, so we'll see as we go with this. And like, they keep getting longer. <laughs> like my last one was almost 30 minutes long. So I, I wanna take a break, reflect, especially if this is talking about mental health, like I'll, I'll definitely wanna, reflect on things and um, share with y'all what I'm thinking. So this might be longer than a day and a half read. So we'll just have to see. While I was at the Black History Month and books event at the Cincy Library Friends, my bookstagram friend Tiana recommended this book to me. Plus like right after I picked it up, like immediately she's like, you have to read this book. It's amazing. I listened to the audiobook, and that is American Street by E.B. Zavoy. And this details a Haitian immigrant to the U.S. I believe it's the Tro Detroit area. And I, it's also a young adult novel and it's also endorsed by Nicola Yoon. So I'm like, all good things, all pointing to great reflections, great reviews of this book. And this is one that I, yes, bought in February, so not too long ago, probably a week or so before this video is now being published on YouTube that I had purchased this book. So yeah, I mean, we talked a lot at this event. It was not just a, hey, let's meet up with other bookstagrammers, get some pictures, enter some giveaways and shop. It was about how can we continue to talk about, to learn about black history all year long and not just in February. So a, one of the books the grammars ruined her books. She, uh, she was amazing. She had such good insight and was so thoughtful and like just was so aware of like inclusivity and just amazing. And she had said that one of her friends wanted to do a buddy read for February for a book by a black author or, or had black characters or something. And she suggested that they read it in March. And I, I really appreciated her sharing that of like, we, we don't have to just read black stories in February, <laughs> like all year long, we can be reading them. And like, I, I appreciate that. And that's something I am aware of as well. So I definitely push that this into the next month. And I just am excited and just think the cover is very stunning. And I think I'm going to enjoy the story. Another book from the book loft in Columbus, Ohio, I'm seeing a theme here, I guess all the books I bought, I want to read in March now, is 500 Miles From You by Jenny Colgan. So this I'd seen on a lot of book accounts as well. So this shows two different people, one on the northern part of the United Kingdom, one on the southern part of the United Kingdom, and they kind of like switch places. One's like a city person, one's more out in the country, and they both switch for like mental health reasons or just just need a change of scenery, just need different people in their lives and different things that add value could be found in these locations. So they kind of communicate with each other and go from there. And I'm assuming some kind of relationship doesn't necessarily have to be romantic, but something kind of emerges between the two of them. So also set in the United Kingdom, 
you know. <laughs> if you know me, you know that I love reading books that are set in the UK. And then this could also satisfy for the Read Around the World challenge. And so could the book that I just shared, American Street, which is set kind of, well, part of it in Haiti and talking about somebody of Haitian descent that moves to America. So yeah, finishing up that Read Around the World challenge this month as well. Next I have Young Jane Young by Gabrielle Zevin. And this, I feel like I have another book by her too that I just picked up. That's why. <laughs> the Storied Life of AJ Fickery. I'm like, I feel like I just saw her name. So yes, there we go. Perfect. But this is what I'll be reading for this month is about five women who are involved in some kind of sexist scandal. So I've heard this is pretty comedic, but also like, yikes, like that, that happens in real life. So I think this should be good, especially as I'm learning more and wanting to read more about strong independent women and women that are um, unafraid to to go out and do things on their own and like push themselves and challenge themselves. I think this will be a good one for me. The last print book I have is Gilead by Marilyn Robinson. And I, I'll be honest, I have a hard time when I see the word, I don't even know if I'm saying it right, with Gilead because I keep imagining A Handmaid's Tale and I'm like, I don't think this is where this is going or what it's going to be talking about. But I mean, maybe there's like this this title or this book inspired part of Handmaid's Tale? I, I honestly don't know, or vice versa. But this chronicles three different generations in America from Civil War onward. And I thought that would be interesting because it's about relationships, fathers, sons, and kind of how these generations evolve and what is happening in their country, in America at those times and how that affects them in a way. So yeah, it's a commentary on the United States, which I think could be interesting too, but it won the Pulitzer Prize. So I think that speaks very high volumes of uh, the experience I'll be getting out of this book. So I might, it is a, a thinner paperback, so may, it, it packs a punch in a small amount of, of text. So I will probably have to slow down my reading for sure and not try to do a like, oh, let me leave the last few days of March to read this and try to get it in and just be done with it. So I think there'll be some more reflecting with this one. So I've already filled out as well my always fully booked Little Inklings planner with my March TBR. So I had to pull this up because I'm also doing audiobooks this month and I have three that I know that I want to read and two of them are satisfying the Read Around the World Challenge. So one of them is called The Dinner by Herman Coach. And I'll put a nice little picture right around here of that book cover. Um, but that one is set in the Netherlands. So I believe that one's more like a murder mystery thriller kind of vibe. And I remember seeing this book cover because one of the classes I took a few semesters ago, it was about like the literary marketplace we were talking about how books get book covers get designed and book jackets and one of them was this example was of the dinner and how the final version which i attached um, went through like so many different versions and it was just interesting so once i saw it and that was set in the netherlands i'm like yep i'm gonna read that one and then we have adultery by paulo colo and this is set in brazil so if you're familiar with the alchemist this is the same author as that and yeah, not too much I know about it. By the name itself, Adultery, I'm sure we're gonna be going into some interesting dynamics between a married couple or a couple that is committed to each other in some kind of way and one or both not being so faithful. So what does that look like? Is there forgiveness? Is there still love, acceptance, all that kind of stuff. Then the last one I have for audiobook is The Selection by Kiera Cass. So this was recommended to me as a book I could stay up all night reading. So maybe this is one I'll stay up all night listening to, so who knows? So this is a young adult, um, maybe post-apocalyptic sci-fi fantasy realm where these young girls, young ladies, I think they're in their teens, early teens, are entering this competition and to be like selected. It is part of a series, so we'll, again, we'll see what happens when I read or listen to the first book and wanna continue with it or I wanna buy the physical books themselves. But for the main character, she's kinda torn because being a part of this process of the selection, if she is chosen to be in this life of glamour and like jewels and palaces and things like that she has to leave who she loves who will not be a part of that society so like what does she do does she meet somebody else and she's torn between two 
not sure, but I thought that would be kind of fun. Uh, again, another kind of escapist young adult novel for me to enjoy as we are getting ready to get out into the world again. Hopefully um, it's getting a lot warmer here. So I, mean, I could probably listen to this while I'm walking or running outside as well. So we'll see. So those are all the books that I plan to read for the month of March. Again, as always, they are subject to change. So we'll just see what happens. I feel like I say that a lot too. See what happens, see where it goes, see how it goes. But honestly, I'll have to <laughs> because there's some even from last month that I thought that I started reading at the beginning of the month and then like just didn't pick up again and I'll have to revisit that another time so that might happen here I don't know which book I'm going to read first uh, if you have suggestions <laughs> feel free to comment down below with what you think I should read first I will say also for the Midnight Library my alumni is doing a book club for that but it's lasting from March until May I think so it's interesting I'll have it finished in like a few days and like probably depending on when they have the first meeting with the the book club or the virtual book club um i might already be done it but that's okay i'll like still be continuing and like engaging with other people i just need to watch myself on spoilers in case folks aren't at the part that i'm at or vice versa i hope if other people are ahead of me at that point they don't share anything spoilery with me either so yeah we'll uh we'll have a great time but yes thank you so much for watching if you like this video please give it a thumbs up or comment down below let me know what you plan to read for the month of march or something that you're excited for for this month if you want to hit subscribe feel free to do that and see when more videos are uploaded and you can tag the notification bell so you'll know immediately when i upload a video and then if you want to support me further i have my coffee and wish list listed in the description below so again thank you so much have a great day enjoy spring exciting and happy reading